Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Rabbit Dog's House. Here in the house, we like to talk about lost or forgotten horror gems throughout the decades. I'm your host, Justin Steele. Tonight, we're going to be talking about 1985's Phenomena, also known as Creepers in the U.S., directed by Dario Argento, Phenomena follows a young girl with a telepathic bond to insects that she uses to help her track down a serial killer. Starring Jennifer Connelly, Donald Pleasance, and Daria Nicolodi. Joining us here in the house is a very special guest star tonight, Zena Dixon. All right, well, welcome to another episode of the Rabbit Dog's House. Thank you, Zena, for joining us here again. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited. To uh, and I'm excited to talk about one of my all-time favorite, favorite horror movies. Definitely my favorite Dario Argento movie, Phenomena, also known as Creepers in the U.S., um, for me, you know, Creepers, I'm, I was a big fan of Labyrinth growing up, Jennifer Connelly, David Bowie, hence why I'm wearing my Labyrinth t-shirt today. And I saw it back in the days of video stores, VHS copy of Creepers, which was how it was released in the U.S., a much, much shorter condensed version. And for me, I just loved everything about it. I, I came to know later on that I loved Dario Argento before I knew that I loved Dario Argento. And so I finally got to watch it. Everything was beautiful in it. I think it's a great mix of his giallo and his supernatural, like his giallos of his, you know, 60s, early 70s, up to Deep Red, to his supernatural, Suspiria, Inferno. And I think it's the perfect combination. But Zena, for you, how did how did Creepers slash Phenomena come into your life? You know, what's funny is that I would always see the poster um, around. And so I thought that it was really cool. I remember seeing like separate posters, one for Phenomena, then one for Creepers. Um, I don't know. I was kind of in intrigued. I think one day I was visiting this college campus. This was actually maybe like three or four years ago. So I'm relatively pretty new with watching it. And I kind of just went in blind because it's like I would see the poster, but I really didn't know what it was about. I, um, I'm actually a huge fan of Dario Argento. Like I have like these set movies, um, by him that I just always watch all the time on rotation. Nice. And you know, sometimes when you, when you just have these set of movies that you love and it's kind of like, you don't want any new movies, if yes. that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> so I kind of decided to watch this one by going in kind of blind and I just fell in love with it. Jennifer Connelly, she's just so beautiful. That's she number is, one. Yeah. And it's just like her character is likable. Even though it's like some things that's happening in it, it's kind of like, oh, you know, kind of questionable. But you still cannot help but see like, hey, this girl's really charming in it, you know? Yeah, I think you could see the talent of where she was going to go and, you know, the trajectory of her career. She became an Oscar winning actress. And I've followed her ever since. Like I said, I love Labyrinth. So I followed her for a long time. But you can definitely see it in this movie. You know, she's... She is beautiful physically, but she also has this like determination, this sort of rebellious nature to authority, which will help her to kind of go after this serial killer Absolutely. using these sort of powers. You know, I, I wrote a Back to the 80s article about this a while back, and it, it really is what I said in that was this movie is like Carrie as a detective you know, in a, in a Dario Argento movie. She's got it has a lot of those Stephen King elements of like a girl with this weird telepathic bond to insects insects but like a paranormal sort of thing and she uses it to like defend herself against bullies as well as this serial killer right that's a really cool concept and you know Dario Argento it's wacky I mean you the whole movie itself has a lot of like weird moments but they all in the end it all works you know they might walk right to the edge like you have this chimpanzee <laughs> character and it's only in the 80s that i think we could like go to a theater and be like oh sure that kind of makes sense although you know we are kind of like no it doesn't but it does right. it, he makes it work he pieces it together and he brings it all together with the music and uh the the, the images that you see because Dario argento i think is i always say it's like watching a nightmare come to life like if you had a nightmare on the screen and it's like that's the feeling it gives me like as if i'm having this nightmare and i have to ride it to the end Right. And I think, you know, Phenomena came out at a part where he was still like the Wes Craven or John Carpenter of Italy. And I think like his work later on, people have criticized. I like it. I, you know, it's definitely cheesier, but I even like The Card Player. And uh, do you like Hitchcock? I mean, my favorite, favorite Argento movies are Tenebre, 
opera, which I only saw about a year ago, because like you said, I think that's a really good thing how you said there are movies you don't want to put any more in because you're almost like selfishly guarding your, right. own, you know, the movies you love. And opera, I, I had waited and waited, and I'm glad I watched it when I did because I loved it. But Tenebre, opera, Phenomena, and Suspiria, those are kind of my big ones. Although Inferno is one that I've really become obsessed with lately. It's, I think it's underrated and it has all these colors and stuff. But what, what are some of your favorite Dario Argento movies? You know, it's funny that you even bring up Inferno because I'm a little bit obsessed with that movie myself. That I don't know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, I'm, like, I recently watched it maybe, like, three years ago. I recently watched it, and I've just been hooked. Yeah. It's like one of my favorites. I love the colors. I love the random cat. So it's just, like, I just cannot get enough of it. So it's definitely um, Inferno. I'm also going to say Deep Red. Um, even though he only did a segment in um, Two Evil Eyes, the black cat one, that one's right. actually my favorite. Um, Phenomena is actually one of them. And honestly, I'm going to say, this is not really a, obviously it's not a movie, but you remember Masters of Horror? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never <laughs> saw his segment, but I know it, I know exactly what you're talking about. He did the segment. Well, he had two. One was, um, Jennifer, which is my absolute, one of my favorite episodes of Masters of Horror. It is just so, like, it's, what is happening? That's, that's how it makes me feel. And then he also did Pelts, and Pelts was, Pelts was good, you know, but um, even taking a step back, how you, how you described uh, Phenomena, I would always describe it because it's funny because I'm kind of jumping ahead. I rewatched it the other night, and my husband walked in at the end where Inga, the monkey, like, okay, just, yeah, yeah. So he was so confused and upset. I bet, I bet he was. <laughs> so I tried to explain it to him, but he left the room upset, you know? So it's like, what am I supposed to do? But one day I'm going to have him watch it. But basically, I, I try to describe it as like, okay, it's like murder she wrote, but with the supernatural sure, thing. For sure. You know? And you, also, this is, this is kind of random, and I'm not trying to sound like super ignorant. But I've always had the hardest time pronouncing. Is it Jalo or like? Zena, it's funny that you say that because I was just running with this in my head before we started. I'm like, okay, I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Giallo. I always, always pr pronounced it Giallo, but okay. it's I'm 99% sure that it's Giallo. Okay. Like it, like they, like where we would as as Americans pronounce the the like soft G of G, it's actually the hard G of J Giallo. Okay. But I'm with you. I'm with you on this. Okay. I promise. Yeah. I literally was thinking before we started. I'm like, oh, I want to sound good. So what is it? What yeah. is it? But so, yes, that's know, I, I've been practicing, but then it just went out the window. So it's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It, I do feel like this movie phenomena is always overshadowed by Suspiria, and Suspiria yes. is awesome. I really, really love Suspiria. Me I remember too. I actually watched that when I was in high school, and it probably is one of my favorites too it's not that i forget about it but i just really love like inferno and deep red um you know like like i said i i watched the Spiria much later you know i was in my mid-20s somewhere between mid-20s and 30s and i um i finally was like okay i'm gonna do it i think there was a copy on youtube so i'm like let's just sit down and watch it and i watched suspiria and then i right away it was like probably like one in the morning i'm like let's keep going they had inferno <laughs> pop up so i was like all right i'll watch inferno too so i will say that for me I i'm able to separate them because for a long time i didn't watch inferno again i just focused on suspiria but i did watch them back to back as almost one long movie and the opening of Inferno is, you know, I think it's brilliant. You know, I might not say it's the best horror opening of all time, but it's one of those openings where it is the colors and you're wondering this mystery. Like there's a, he sets, he sets up a really good atmosphere. You, you feel like you're in this world, even though it's like a hyper, hyper sensitive world of these colors and stuff and music. But when she's walking down into the cellar and you're like, don't go down there. Right. I want you to go down there, but don't go down there. And then you're like, no, you're not getting in that water. You're not, you're what? not. You're like, but do, it, but do it. Cause you want her to, you, you want to see what's down there, but you're like, don't go down there. But with Suspiria, what I do love about Phenomena in comparison to Suspiria is that he, Argento, really did want to do Suspiria with uh, younger ages of like 13, 14 year old girls. But they, but the studios and all that were like, well, you know, that's too young. We don't want to put these girls in these scary positions. But I feel like he kind of snuck that in with Phenomena because mm -hmm. I feel like Jennifer Connelly is more mature than she, you know, you would think. But I think she was only about 13 when she filmed Phenomena. And I mean, she looks about 15, 16. Right. But all the other girls in this movie too, they're they're about 14 years old. So he kind of got his wish 
of what he wanted to do with Suspiria. But yeah, I definitely love the the, the supernatural stuff that he does. I, but I love it's you know when we talked about last time, cursed. You know, the, Kevin Williamson and Wes Craven, they have a certain style in terms of these sort of detective mystery, but with the slasher. I really like, my, I think Argento's best work is his giallo with the supernatural. Absolutely. I, I love Tenebre, which is just straight-laced giallo, but I, I feel like the, the what we all want from him, like I think when Mothers of Tears that completed that trilogy came out, a lot of people were disappointed because the you know the supernatural stuff's there, but he didn't create the sort of energy. I love Mothers of Tears. I think I'm one of the few, but I it you know it definitely was missing that dreamlike quality. It almost seemed like it was real world supernatural or something. So now most audiences know it as Creepers in the U.S. in the international release, it's Phenomena, and Creepers is very much an edited version of Phenomena. It's missing about 25 minutes worth of film, and recently Arrow released their deluxe edition where you could get the 110 minute international cut, the 86 minute Creepers, or this 116 minute full version. Now I will say that obviously I love the longer version, you know, it's you have all the elements, everything's there. It definitely has a little bit more of a story. Um, I, I don't think the 116 minute version is necessarily better. It's literally mostly just little cuts. You wouldn't even notice. It's not like, there's not like big scenes missing and from the 116 to 110 minute. But I will say between the two titles, I think Creepers is a better title than Phenomena. Uh, I prefer the Phenomena film, but in terms of horror movie audiences, I feel like they would be more likely to naturally gravitate towards a title like Creepers than Phenomena. I think Phenomena works. It's this weird thing that happened. But Creepers about the insects, the whole death pit sequence, which I think is amazing, but the, the feelings that it gives. But what do you think? Do you, would you be more likely to see a movie called Creepers or Phenomena? I would actually watch a movie um, if it was called Phenomena. Well, obviously, right. if, if that's what it's called. But I'm sure, for sure. Her. I'm more drawn to that because I feel, especially after seeing the movie, because it's honestly, it's a weird movie. It's, it's a really so weird hard movie. to, yeah. it, it really is. And it's so hard to explain to people what it's, a, what it's like exactly about. Sure. So, I even, um, I kind of asked a, a question on Twitter, like not too long ago, like before we even got on here and just started chatting, just to see which one people prefer. And I noticed that a lot of people actually do prefer, um, if they prefer Phenomena, it's because they prefer that actual version. However, sure. if they prefer Creepers, it's kind of like, like you said, you know, because it is more horror targeted. But the thing is, it's like, for me, I just feel like Phenomena actually fits it better. And I think it's just, that would make me watch it, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, I think the poster's really cool, to be honest with you. Um, Again, even with uh, Jennifer Connelly on it, with the bugs. Right. And it's like right behind you. So, yeah, right. <laughs> so of sure. course, it, it looks great, but... I don't know. I'm I'm more drawn again just to that actual title. Well, I think what I would where I agree with you on the title part of it most certainly is that if you take the movie as a whole, because I let you know I think Creepers is more apt to get in a general horror audience. But yes, you are definitely right because there's other things other than the insects, the creepy crawly stuff. Um, you know, it definitely gives me the creeps. But you're right, you have the the chimpanzee, you have the sort, I mean, it's not just the insects that are there, it's this weird phenomenon right. that's going on with Jennifer's character. And uh, it's definitely more of an aptly named title for phenomena. I, I think that as um, a horror audience, I, Creepers is what if I was more, I definitely, I think New Line dropped the ball a lot with their distribution of this movie. But I will say, and again, it might just be that's the way I came to it, but I prefer Creepers over Phenomena, but I definitely prefer the movie Phenomena over Creepers. We're talking about the movie posters. That's definitely my favorite. I think that might be my favorite horror movie poster is Creepers. Um, I, you know, Halloween Five, the movie poster for that was always one of my favorites. Okay. Nightmare on Elm Street Three. You know, what are some of your favorite uh, movie posters? Um, I really like uh, Mausoleums. Uh, this is movie. Um, it was made maybe eighty three, I believe. Um, it's just like a really cool. Like I'm a huge fan of eighties horror movies, which we did discuss, and sure, that one sure. screen eighties. Um, another one that's uh, early nineties popcorn that one's oh really that's a really good one yeah i love that one yes <laughs> that one's so great and um alice sweet alice is oh just, yeah that's a good one too yeah i watched that movie based on the cover alone i went in blind had no idea what was going on um another movie from the 70s um well two 70s ones by actually by the same director bob clark and that's uh death dream and uh children shouldn't play with dead things 
So oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Seen the poster or the, I'll have to look it up. It's actually really cool. I wish I had it hanging. So I, 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 uh, I like to say too, I miss the concept of movie posters and art. I have movie posters all over the place because I think of it as art. You know, I, I feel like now it's just even like the thing that's coming to my mind the, the fastest is the new Halloween movie when it came out. I mean, it's basically a picture of Jamie Lee Curtis, a real photo. You know, it's not like artwork. Um, right. And I feel like, you know, like even the Halloween poster originally was an artwork of this pumpkin, pumpkin, and then the knife. And I miss those days. I mean, because like you said, you saw Alice, Sweet Alice. Was that the one you said you saw just because of the poster? Uh, that's, I mean, that's what made me pick up the VHS. And I was like, oh, Jennifer Connelly, I love her. Nice. And I probably wouldn't have done it if it had been the any other poster or just a basic photo. I might have. You know, I mean, of course I might have. But I miss that sort of attraction that you had just from this artwork. Because horror is art, you know? And I think... Ultimately, what we come down to doing these sort of videos or writing and stuff is to emphasize to the world of popular culture that horror is art. And how better is that demonstrated than through movie posters, you know? So, you know, but there's so many things that come out of these, you know, these movies. It's not just the movies themselves. There's novelizations, games, et cetera. And I miss those kind of things that came about from that time. Absolutely. You know, something that comes to mind, um, this is just completely random, but I read uh, somewhere, I don't know who's on Wikipedia or not, but there was this uh, video game, a Japanese video game from the 90s, I believe like 1996, called Clock Tower that- Oh, um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Inspired by Phenomena, so you played it? I played Clock Tower, yes, it was my cousin and I, we played it. Now, I didn't know, and I'm so glad you brought this up, that you thought of this and not me, but I, I, we played it, my cousin and I, this was right before I started driving. Um, so it was like the last of my kid video games thing, but that game scared the heck out of me. I, it's very much the concept of, I didn't put it two and two together when I played it. It was years later that I realized this, but there is a character named Jennifer and that's who you're kind of playing as you're going through this creepy house. But then this guy, the music changes, it gets all the lighting changes and you're in a room and you got to get the hell out of here. As this guy with these huge like scissors kind of come at him, like the tool that the, the kid oh, uses yeah. in Creepers Phenomena. But it was horrifying, horrifying. Yes, I'm so glad. See, you know, I'm so glad that you thought to bring that up and I didn't because I love that game. I love that game. And yes, that's, you know, what this is all about. These sort of, there's art in other ways. Now, a big part of horror movies, especially 80s horror movies, for me, is not just the images, it's the music, it's the soundtrack. And I think we have some iconic soundtracks from that time. Phenomena, for me, I think, you know, Suspiria, it has definitely, like, you know, they're siblings. I think the, the basic theme are siblings to each other, from Suspiria to Phenomena. But also, he does, Dario Argento takes it an extra step by using the inclusion of heavy metal music in it. And I think that it can be a little bit jarring. And I think it, you know, it definitely makes you kind of think for a second. But I love the use of heavy metal in it. I think at the time, you know, MTV was really a thing. And people were like nuts over like music videos. And I think he was thinking on that side of his brain too. But in a more intellectual way, Dario Argento, Heavy metal music at the time was considered by like conservative people as like the devil's music or this is the devil. So it almost becomes a, you know, musical way of saying like she's running from evil now or like because the first time I think it really happens that I remember is when um, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but Donald Pleasant's character, something happens and then she sees the the aftermath and it's heavy music starts playing, and you would think it would be like almost this sad music motion, but instead it's like, oh shit, she's gotta run now. You know, right. like, oh, it's happening, it's coming too close to home. But what do you think about the use of the heavy metal music? Because I know not everybody cared for it. I loved it, but right. what did you think? I'm actually a fan of it. Okay. I love it. I didn't think that it would fit, but it just works, you know? Um, once again, this movie is, it's kind of bizarre, but in a good way. Yeah. And I actually read, um, an article just where they were talking about the soundtrack and how, of course, they use Goblin, Iron Maiden, and Motorhead. So yeah. it's kind of like a lot of critics actually hated the fact that they use heavy metal. But it's funny because now they're saying, um, like, a, there was like this recent study, you can say. Yeah, someone did a study. And basically, <laughs> um, they discovered basically that a lot of horror fans, millennial horror fans, they're huge fans of it. So it's just All like, right. it, works, it works out, you know? Yeah, I mean, I really think, like you said, I like to use the word bizarre because I think that's really an accurate way to describe this movie. It has the basic elements of Slasher, Final Girl, all that stuff, the, even the soundtrack, basic soundtrack. 
But it is a bizarre movie. I don't think anybody can guess what's going to happen. You could try and guess like who the murderer is or what, you know, what's going on. It all lines up in the end and it all makes sense in the end for the world that he's created in Phenomena. But it is a bizarre movie and it is a bizarre moment to have these things. It reminds me in a way of like David Lynch, who also has those sort of moments where you'll be watching something and then something very bizarre just kind of pops in. And Argento had that quality too. At this time, I think he still has it. It's just not being as like accepted or appreciated. But at this time, he was like spot on with it. And I think it's disappointing that at the time, people didn't respond as well to this movie as they did with Suspiria, Deep Red, even Tenebre. But I think this one is, I mean, again, it's my favorite Argento movie, but I think it, I think it should be a lot more people's favorites because it's everything that you would love in Absolutely. an Argento movie. Absolutely. And that's something like you just described it perfectly and then on top of that it's like it's not predictable it's so, not it really isn't even the first 10 minutes it's just like they pretty much throw you into the movie they yeah. don't even have like a production like logo you know how like a movie starts and yeah. no it's just bang you know it, it, it's happening someone's dead and you move on you know yeah. so it's 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 that opening is fantastic too i'd like to say just the whole smashing window thing slow oh, motion yeah. i love what i love about it too again this is his artistry that window is in slow motion and it's this shot that's like beautiful and horrifying, mm -hmm. but then it, it's followed with a very blunt, like just the head then falls. Like it's so it's so slow motion and dramatic and then blunt. And I just, I love that about it. Like it, because it really sent, there's a chill that always goes through my body where I'm like, that's so horrifying. <laughs> like, oh gosh. I feel horrible for that girl. Yeah. Oh, like Played by Dara Argento's daughter, Fiore. She didn't, <laughs> uh, yeah, she didn't go on. She, she was she's a very introverted person. Um, she, you know, she wanted to she was always behind the scenes with her father, but she wasn't like trying to become an actress. But she was kind of like, why not? I'll do it. You know, I'll give it a shot. Um, unlike Asia Argento or again, here we are again. Giallo versus Gallo. I don't know. If, I don't think it's Asia Argento. I think it's Asia Argento. Oh my God, no, I've been calling her Asia. <laughs> it might. It, I like to say, here's my thing. One of, so off topic horror, but ABBA is my favorite band. And the blonde lead singer, if you're in Sweden, you would say Agnetha. If you're in America, you say Agnetha. And either one is perfectly acceptable. So I think you should just go with that. For us, we would say Asia Argento. And I'm agreeing with you on that. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Asia Argento, you know, obviously became a big staple of Argento's movies. And then even branched off on her own. Fiore Argento, you know, she has this delicate, introverted quality. I remember the first time watching this, just her being like, I'm a foreigner. And I'm like, oh, sh that's so vulnerable. And, you know, like, I I'm so worried for her. And then, you know, it's not going to go well. And uh, the performances all together, the headmistress I thought was fantastic. Oh, um, obviously, we talked about Jennifer Connelly. Donald Pleasance, I mean, talk about horror icons. And I feel like the whole movie, he seems to be just full of joy. Where he goes so dark as Dr. Loomis or gets so into it in a different way. He seems like a little boy in this movie in a way, like, excited to talk about ethnology, which is not anything I'm at all <laughs> but, but it's it's a fit you know within the constructs of this movie it's fascinating but yeah he's like a little boy in it and uh the Daria now Daria Nicolodi was married to Daria, Daria Argento she co-wrote Suspiria so it was definitely the end of their marriage in Phenomena. And you kind of see that sort of play out that this is definitely a role for her. But I thought she was maniacal. In, she's She has that sort of quiet personality for the first half of the movie. And it becomes completely like maniacal when you find out her past and stuff. And I'm right. like, oh, that plays out really well. Did you, yeah, I mean, overall, did you like the performances? I love it. Like Jennifer and all that? Love, love the performances. And then even going, uh, touching back with the headmistress, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just random, and maybe you don't care, but I was just blown away by the fact that uh, Giorgio, Giorgio, Giorgio Armani. Armani, yes. Basically, he's the costume designer, and I found that really awesome. So yeah. it's just, and it, even sticking, like what sticks out to me is actually the wardrobe. There are a lot of outfits that I think is pretty awesome. I think so too. That the whole ensemble she wears and Jennifer Connelly of the second half of the film, it's sharp. I love it. Yes. No, I, I'm with you on this. You know, there was this one scene when um, you can kind of like hear like her voiceover and she's riding on the bus and she's wearing this like little hat and I, I need that hat, you know? Yes. Um, so <laughs> I love see, it. I love it. I'm see totally that, with you. <laughs> right? So, so seeing that, I thought that was really cool. But, you know, I really 
do enjoy still because like I still go back honestly every couple of months and just rewatch this movie because it's just one of those movies. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the like the performances, especially Jennifer Connelly. Like I just think that she's just she's so cute in the movie and she's just a likable character. You're rooting for her. You want her to solve this mystery, and yeah. then even the mystery itself. I did not suspect who, and that's what I love. You know when you're watching a movie and you can tell by the credits who the killer is? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I 100% agree. I think it's a very unpredictable, and that's what I love about it because that's what Dario Argento does. You can't pinpoint who this is going to be. He keeps I, you really. He, it's, but it's still logical. Like it's not just out of the blue. Oh, it was you know the one armed man. It, it's it is very much somebody that. Oh well, of course it was this person the whole time, but. We never thought it for a second. I didn't, for sure. And right. I'm pretty good about picking up on things like that, too. Absolutely. But overall, you know, it's definitely... It's not just my favorite Argento movie. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. I've gone back to visit it over and over again. And it's art. You know, it's like watching a moving picture, a moving nightmare come to life. And that's that's what Dario Argento does. Something else that comes to, comes to mind uh, for me is that again, with the actual soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you're someone who enjoy, um, you know, movies from the 80s or even just movies from the from the 90s, any any type of, any year in general, um, you'll enjoy this movie. You'll find there's something in this movie for everyone, I feel. And I have not come across someone who said, oh, I hate this movie. There may be people where they're just like, oh, I'm not a fan. You know, because it's kind of like, it, it's more respectable where it's kind of like, they understand why people like it, you know, even if it's not their cup of tea, which is totally fine. So it's like, if you're someone who haven't checked it out, um, I recommend giving it a watch. I think everyone at least needs to watch it once, even if you're not too crazy about it. Sure. You know, it does. It keeps you guessing. It, it, you know, especially if you're at all even dabbling in the Argento lexicon of movies. It's definitely one that's like going to keep you on your toes. You're going to be full of disbelief, but being able to believe it, you know, it does really come down. If you like, like the idea of those Stephen King kids, I call them like Carrie, Danny Torrance. It has that sort of uh, Charlie McGee fire starter kind of feel to it, right. but it's, but, but somebody a little older who can be a detective who's kind of figuring out, like you said, Jennifer Connelly, her performance, she is kind of tough and, She's incredible. She's tough because she's vulnerable. She's protecting herself, having her father be the celebrity. So when the end, you know, as the climax occurs and things are happening, she's been tough all this time. And she's definitely like, no, I want to go home, damn it, and et cetera. But when it comes down to she's being attacked, I mean, you feel for her. Like, she's clearly scared, like, oh, I'm a little girl. And how did I get into this situation? Mm -hmm. And um, I do want to mention, you know, in addition to the music, the settings, you know, the, not just the, the, the images in general, but these beautiful settings that are like, you know, the house on a lake and it should be beautiful and it becomes tainted by evil and the whole pit sequence at the end um, on the back. That was the other thing that got me was I saw the cover VHS cover flipped to the back. Jennifer Connelly. Awesome. And then I kind of saw this picture of her in this pit and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's going on there. But when yeah. you see it, it's the moment, no matter what, even if you've hated the movie up until this point, you're like, I'm just going to finish it. It's the moment that gets everybody every time. I love watching this movie with other people for this reason, because I'm always like, their eyes just bulge yeah. and it's fantastic. And it's that beautiful enjoyment as a horror fan that those are the moments we live for, I think, in horror. We all have the things we love about horror films, but those are the moments that we love are when you're like, here it comes. This is, you know, the the hill is go we're going over the hill of the roller coaster and it's here. And it's definitely got a few of those moments, but that's a big, big scene that I think plays out amazingly horrifying. I would be horrified to be in that pit. You know, it's funny you bring up that pit because something I thought was kind of like weird when I first watched it is just like, okay, why would you have a secret pool in a dungeon with maggots in it? You know, but again, it just it just makes sense and it just fits. Um, something else I, I thought was pretty cool, and I meant to tell you this earlier, another random weird little fact. I was reading up because one of my um favorite characters in the movie is actually Inga. I feel like she is a star. Yeah. And, and um, what what I thought was, you know, not so cool, um, I read about Jennifer Connelly actually getting her finger bit. It's like, whoa, yeah. like a chunk of her finger off. And it's just like the, the monkey in her, well, the monkey didn't care for her for some reason, which is so unfortunate yeah. that's traumatized. Because you would never know that that happened because even with that embrace at the end. Yeah. So, 
Well, I think if it makes you feel any better, I've researched this a bit, this story, and I, what I've pieced together out of everything is that it, you know, at first they started off okay, and then it kind of happened. It's when the two of them are going up the stairs, they're riding Donald Pleasance, the doctor's like ramp to go upstairs, and it, it kind of stopped a little fast, and however it happened, the way they were touching each other at the time, Inca just jumped in and bit her real quick. And, you know, she was clearly Jennifer Connelly then didn't really want to do anything with it. But that final scene happens at towards the end of shooting as well. So they definitely made up and Jennifer Connelly was OK. She was kind of like, all right, we'll try it again. I mean, Jennifer, one more time about Jennifer Connelly. She was very brave in this movie. She did a lot of brave things. She jumped in that pit. She did the underwater pool stuff. Yeah. She came, I mean, I know what it's like. I've been bitten by a dog. I know how hard it is to kind of come back up to that dog again. And this, you know, to, to come up to a, 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 an animal that's maybe trained, but is a wild animal, she did come up and they made up and they were good. So it does have a happy ending, that story, <laughs> that it did go well overall. But yeah, it was. I would. I wondered about that too because it did change how I felt about the movie a little bit. Where I'm like, oh, that's sad, because Inga is a fascinating character. That's another. You. You. How. I'm the type of person, and I'm sure you are too, when I see animals in films, I can handle humans sometimes being like blasted away or this or that. But once an animal's involved, I'm very much like, oh, da, 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 da. now I'm nervous. <laughs> like, and I love the arc because again, it probably, you know, it's unlikely in the real world, but you 100% believe it in Argento land. You believe it. You believe that this happened and it, it, it becomes a heroic thing in the end. And Oh, I just love this movie. I could so, talk about this movie for hours. I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it brings back nostalgic memories. But I, I, I'm proud of it because I think it's a good film. It's a film that I will show anybody that loves even just horror a little bit. But I'm also, like, proud of it. That it's like, for such a weird, bizarro movie, it's art to me, anyway. So, And thank you, everybody, for watching another episode of The Rabbit Dog's House. Here at the house, we like to talk about some of our favorite lost horror gems of any decade, 80s, 90s, today. But what are some of your favorite 80s movies from this time? Are you a fan of Dario Argento? And if so, what is your favorite Dario Argento movie? And let us know below, do you like Creepers as a title or Phenomena as a title? I'm your host, Justin Steele. You can find me over at Wicked Horror, 411 Pop Culture, or on Twitter at Wicked Horror Justin. And this is also my special guest star, the Zena Dixon. You can find her on Wicked Horror, Red Central, or at realqueenofhorror.com. Thanks again for joining me, Zena. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all soon. Have a good one. <laughs>